About 18 months ago, I made a trip uh, up to Eugene, Oregon, back when we did do such things. I went to go see a guy named Mark Frohnmeyer. He's the founder and CEO of a company called Arkimoto, which makes this very cool and kind of different electric vehicle. They call it a fun utility vehicle, a FUV. It's super fun to drive, and I took it all around Eugene. The company, after this really long struggle, had started to hit its stride. Its manufacturing plant was up and running. They knocked out the first 100 vehicles and started delivering them all up and down the west coast of the United States. And then, of course, uh, the coronavirus came along and slowed everything down for them. But if there's a bright spot in any of this, at least for Arkimoto, it's that their vehicles have turned out to be really useful during the pandemic and maybe to have opened up some new opportunities for the company. And so with that, let us head up to Eugene and, and Mark's house and check in on Arkimoto. Aha, I get to take a tour of your house. Yep. Right. One of the, the rare perks of doing this. We cleaned up the kitchen just for you. <laughs> this is the one you've had since the start? This is VIN, VIN number zero. I don't know if you can read that. I don't know if this is too awkward, but can you sort of flip your screen around so that somebody who's never seen one of these before can take a peek at the console? So you got the, it, it's a, a fairly bare bones screen, shows you your state of charge, the phone, you put your, your, so if you want navigation, you just have it on your phone right here in the middle of the handlebars. And then all your controls are on your hands. So you've got, uh, it really, the vehicle is, I think that combination of, of having something that's really, really fun to drive and is, is practical for daily trips, uh, and at the same time makes a meaningful statement about sustainability. I dig the red, man. It's a sweet ride. Um, but I've got to assume you guys have been struggling a little bit to get some of the new ones that you've made out to customers. Well, we've, we've been doing some kind of crazy uh, California road trips. We, we, the, the one way we figured out we could do deliveries uh, just for some very key ones was we got a, got a, a, a motor home. We're loading up the very first delivery outside of Arkimoto for commercial purposes. We've, we've in, enclosed our COVID bubble uh, on the road. One nice thing about driving in California in the middle of a pandemic is it's the very first time I've ever seen Google Maps be all green. It is one of the only nice things to come out of this. Get all those gas cars off the road. <laughs> hey Mark, what's up buddy? I uh, just want to let you know how much I am enjoying my amazing FUV Arkimoto. It is an absolute blast. It, how did this stuff with Mark Wahlberg even come up? He was actually, he's a, a business partner of one of our, our key investors. He, you know, he used to ride motorcycles, uh, but then has kids and decided that was not a, not a wise idea. So I, the last time I saw you in person, uh, it was probably like 18 months ago, and you guys have been on this long journey, uh, and you'd finally got the factory up and running and hit your stride. Uh, so, you know, what, what's been the story of the last 18 months for our Komodo? We, we've now been in production for a little bit less than a year, um, yeah. and we've, we've put more than 100 production FUVs on the road. Uh, we have launched our pilots of the Rapid Responder, which is our, our vehicle for emergency services, law enforcement, campus security, and the Deliverator, which is our vehicle for, for last mile delivery. Um, we put those pilots on the road in March. And then, of course, um, we're having this discussion <laughs> from our houses because we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And that has been... Um, you know, if you think of uh, the, the production hell of beginning the scaling process and then add in a uh, global pandemic that has disrupted supply chains, made uh, our own manufacturing processes, we've really had to rethink how we space people out within the facility. All of that's been going on at the same time that I think our, the, the vehicles that we're building uh, have, have become, if anything, more relevant to, to, to the world that we're facing. What's, what's 
been your like personal experience through the pandemic? Because I would think it's got to be incredibly frustrating. You get the the company to this good point. You get the manufacturing line humming. The customers are starting to get their deliveries, and then and then this this crisis sets in. How have, how have you coped with that? I, I think the frustrating part for me is just that we have a lot of customers who've been waiting for a very long time to get their Arkimotos, and we've had to you know hold off on delivering them and finishing them and and so on um, if anything if, if this venture has taught me anything it is some measure of patience uh, right. you know I've been at it for almost 13 years uh, and so w w while it that has been a frustration I think the 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 sort of silver lining of it at least for the company is to have a chance to really focus on what it takes to get to scale um, and that's that's important for us really well, for for every reason but primarily if we actually want to succeed in our mission which is to make a meaningful impact on climate change and transportation emissions we got to make a lot of these things we're shooting for a production rate of 50,000 vehicles a year in 24 months that's what takes us from the realm of, of sort of a boutique uh, niche vehicle provider to really providing a mass market solution and so taking the time to figure that out while the world is, is sort of shut down is a good use of time. One of the crazier things during the pandemic has been that the, the stock market's been going up. Uh, Tesla in particular has basically been going to the moon and its stock is, is sort of borderline ridiculous right now. The bull market in Tesla, it's real and it's spectacular. It's gone from $361 to almost $1,800. Tesla could really be stock of the month and stock of the year. You have to kind of decide for yourself whether this is, is rational or not. Um, but without doubt, the, the rise of Tesla has had this knock-on effect of making all the electric vehicle maker stocks shoot up as well. And I was just kind of curious what you make of all this. Now, almost every, so if you look at the basket of stocks that, that we're in, every, everyone from Neo to uh, uh, Nikola to Solo to uh, Workhorse, they've all just, you know, gone right up the hockey stick. Um, and I think that is indicative of a few things. One is, is that this is the first time for some, time, for some people in their lifetimes where they've seen what clean skies look like. And the, the electric vehicle is what gets us there from a transportation standpoint. And I, I think also the, the ideas around how we're gonna transport ourselves have changed. You know, when, when's the next time you plan to jump on a plane? When's the next time you plan? People are, are working from home. They're, so, so your need to commute long distance, your need to fly long distance has gone away largely. And instead, it's all about how can I enjoy my local area, my local community, get to the grocery store, go out in, in, the, in the country for a ride or whatever. I, I think if the pandemic, if I had one takeaway from it, uh, it is that it, for me, it, it fundamentally dispelled the notion that people can't change. Everything changed in the span of a very short period of time once people realized that there was a grave threat. And what that, that actually really gives me hope that when people see the enormity of the threat posed by climate change, that we will begin making the big steps that we need to make together in order to address the problem. You're a busy guy, and so, you, you know, very busy, in addition to all the electric vehicle work. Um, I mean, you've been working on like a, a new sort of voting system for a while now, right? So I... I had a front row seat to the political process. I was actually born uh, into my dad's very first campaign for the state legislature, and then he went on to hold statewide office. Dad would be a great governor. Dave Bronmeyer. A lot of people really like him. And what became really clear to me over time is that we have a super broken political system. What I found is that there's, there's a little bug in how we vote that leads to the polarization that we see. And that bug is that in every election, we're limited to a single choice. So what star voting aims to do is, is fix that bug by giving an equally weighted vote to all the voters. It shifts the choice 
from one choice per office to actually letting you have an opinion, a, a zero to five star opinion on every candidate for a particular office. Uh, I mean, can you give me just like the, the bare bone basics on, on how this works yeah, and absolutely. what STAR stands for? So, so STAR is an acronym, is it represents the ubiquitous five star, you know, zero star is bad, five star is good rating that we're all familiar with from everything from apps to Amazon. But the, the acronym means score, then automatic runoff. All the scores get added up. The two candidates who scored the most over all the people, those are the finalists. And then your vote simply goes to whichever one of those two you gave a higher score. Okay, so so if there's like if there's like six candidates, I can go in. If I want, I could do it just like a regular election and just give my favorite five and, and leave everyone zero. Or I could go in give my favorite five and then maybe I kind of like the policies of two of the other people, I, I could actually like give them like a four star or three star or something in between. Yeah, you could go five, four, four, one, zero. It's totally sort of backward compatible with how we vote now. If you're like, ah, that's, you know, too complicated. You just give your one favor to five and move on. That's a totally valid vote. But if you have an opinion about more than one candidate running, you can express it to whatever level of, of support you want to give a candidate, you can do that. Where have we seen it in practice so far? It was used for the very first time in a statewide political election here in Oregon this year. Almost every single person who was able to get into the system uh, used it. Voters, when given the opportunity to have a more nuanced viewpoint on the outcome, actually do use that capability. And is it, is it better suited for any particular kind of election or is this something you think is universal and you guys would like to see it be used in presidential elections? Dog catcher to president. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we think it's gonna bring immediate benefit at whatever level of government it's used. And, and ultimately the goal is to heal the political divide that we face as a, as a people. Two polarized parties, each of which are aggregations of special interests trying to get to 50% plus one. Because, and, and that's what pockets things that should not be political issues, like the work to address climate change should not be a political issue. Racial justice should not be a political issue, but they end up getting loaded into one or the other party uh, where each party sort of has to oppose the position that the other party is taking. We are not a polarized people. We have a polarizing process that is driving a wedge through the country. Uh, and I think it's it, it, to our great peril that that's the case.